explosion and fire on the Piper platform. All personnel abandoned. Bloody hell, it's really on fire, isn't it? Yeah, they've got already. Uh, zero one, uh, Thoros, the situation is that the platform is completely on fire from sea level to top. Uh, we have in fact pulled back somewhat. Uh, the structure is uh, collapsing and it is uh, total fire. Uh, we are continuing to spray water on it. One of the standby vessels has reported... The journey that we've taken on safety over the three decades, driven by the legacy of that dreadful night and its aftermath, the tragedy of Piper Alpha must be a constant reminder to us all. Thirty years on from the Piper Alpha disaster, our conference provides an opportunity to consider and reflect on a number of themes. When I read reports about major accidents, I'm struck by the fact how frequently they have been preceded by signs indicating danger. But those signs were not recognised or at any rate effectively acted on to prevent the accidents in question or at any rate to limit their extent. The fact of the matter is that the Piper Alpha disaster and the, all the changes that followed on that were very substantial. Uh, people are still living with and living under those changes, so it's still re highly relevant. But the other aspect of it is that the Piper Alpha disaster, like many major accidents, is in fact um, a good source of learning how to prevent further accidents, large or small, because if you examine a major accident, you need to get down to the basement to find out all the underlying factors. Now those factors are in themselves are very important because they can happen again, but they can be prevented from becoming a major accident. So it's got something to tell us. Norway shares the same North Sea waters as Britain, but has developed its oil industry differently. With a population of just over four million, there weren't the same pressures for speedy development. They opted for a highly regulated oil industry, and they've restricted the flow of oil to try and prevent their economy overheating. The design, safety and operation of Norway's rigs is controlled by an independent body, the Norwegian Petroleum Directorate, who advised the government to make risk analysis statutory seven years ago, following two accidents. We certainly were looking around, and I say we, it's myself supported by my legal team and others, to see what mo other models there were to look at. And a Norwegian model was certainly one to look at because you had had to deal with your own disaster only a few years before that. And so we had evidence from, uh, I think, as Mr. Ognedal. Risk analysis is uh, necessary, as we see it, because we want to evaluate any early design with regard to possible accidents and uh, scenarios and the effect these could have, to ensure that any installation being put in the water are adequately protected. We had Alexander Kalen in 1980 with 123 dead, and you saw a change in thinking from prescriptive legislation to risk-based legislation happy in Norway. Uh, the pipe hole going up in 1988 just reinforced that and what you saw from the addition of Piper was a general approach across the global oil industry that said we're moving away from prescriptive to risk-based. En eller annan här förklarar hela grejen på denna måten. Och borr efter olje, det är att placera borr på bond och dreja till höger. Vi har säkert uppfattat att det är mer komplicerat än som så. Det är en lång rekke faktorer som måste tas med i beräkningen.
dette var jo på mange måter også en, en syretest for det norske regimet, og så mange unge tal uttalt i et intervju for en stund siden, at han, da ble, han fikk veldig mye kritikk for å snakke om internkontrollprinsippene, at det ikke ville fungere. Men efter at uh, en innførte de tilsvarende prinsippene i, i Storbritannien, så stilner den uh, kritikken. This is the RFD life jacket. Until Piper Alpha, the most serious North Sea accident was a helicopter crash in which 45 men died. Until Piper Alpha, engineers who designed these chemical plants in the middle of the sea did not believe an uncontrollable chain reaction on a platform could completely destroy it. Det har varit händelser i efterkant av Piper Alpha eh, som har haft väldigt många likheter. Det ser man också i Norge att delar av de träckena som eller tingena som kommer upp i Köln-rapporten, detta här med med styrning, eh, med kommunikation eh mellan parterna alltså mellan eh, de som utför arbetet och de som leder och planlägger arbetet och så vidare är genomgående ting som en finner i för exempel i granskningsrapporter. Så sån sätt så är det väldigt många treck av dessa grundläggande trecken i Köln-rapporten som är aktuella idag. It's not much good having an investigation if it doesn't lead to a lasting improvement in safety. In other words, in results being embedded in the assessment and control of risk and reflected in the way in which work is tackled and done. It's a fact of life that major change very often does depend upon when there's something really bad, some major accident has happened. But you see, they're not only a disaster, but they're also an opportunity to change things. And uh, we're living with, I hope, the benefits of that change. So that's what I would mean by the legacy, because all the good things have come out of it. We're st still getting the benefit from. You can't, um, you can't um, assess the number of accidents that have never happened, large or small. But we're living with the benefits of that, we hope. <laughs>